Hi friends, in this video, we are going to see construction of DC machine. Whether we are talking about a DC generator or DC motor, the construction of DC machine remains same. So let's see constructional diagram of a DC machine. So here, this is a cross sectional of a DC machine having various parts. Let's address all the parts one by one. So first, we'll start with the yoke. Yoke is the outermost protective cover for DC machine. So it is responsible for protection of insulating materials that are used inside. It protects all the components inside from dust, moisture and all other gases and any other particle from the environment. Secondly, it serves a purpose of a mechanical support to the poles. So basically it is very rigid structure and robust also. Secondly, the magnetic flux required for a production of EMF is passed through this yoke. So basically it has one more responsibility that is providing a low reluctance path for the flux because flux maximum flux will be passing through this yo hence low reluctance is required because that will save a magnetic power and ultimately electric energy to produce a same amount of flux so based on this yo is made up of a magnetic material which we consider as cast iron or cast steel so this is a function of yo let's go to the next part that is pole now pole has two parts one is called as a pole core and second a pole shoe so i will draw the structure for better understanding now this is a pole having two parts one is pole core and second is pole shoe now the job of pole core is to carry field winding field winding is nothing but a winding which are responsible for production of flux so if you see the construction of dc machine here windings are wound so to wound these windings area is required and that area is provided by pole core second job of this pole and pole core is to direct the magnetic flux through air gap armature and to the next pole so actually speaking the direction of flux is like this it will be from yo to pole pole to armature armature to next pole and back to the yo this is how it completes path all the flux lines now pole shoe is that part of a pole which will cover maximum armature conductors in its periphery so this area is required so that it will cover maximum armature conductors to cut a flux so that emf induced will be more so this is a function of pole obviously its maximum duty is taking a flux so obviously i should have 
लो रिलेक्टेंस पाथ फॉर दैट आई विल यूज बेटर मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल कास्ट आयन कास्ट स्टील इज अ चॉइस ऑफ मटेरियल प्लस सिंस द पोल रिक्वायर्ड इट्स ऑफ स्पेसिफिक शेप सो वी विल मेक दिस इन अ स्टैम वर्जन वट डज दैट मीन वी विल हैव अ थीन शीट्स ऑफ द पोल एंड नंबर ऑफ शीट्स वी स्टैम टूगेदर टू फॉर्म अ पोल विच इज अल्टीमेटली जॉइन टू द योग लाइक दिस सो हि योग इज जॉइन टू द पोल्स एंड पोल्स आर कैरिंग फील्ड वाइंडिंग लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट इज फील्ड वाइंडिंग सो फील्ड वाइंडिंग इज नथिंग बट अ कॉइल और अ वायर विच विल कैरी अ करंट एंड दैट करंट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अ फ्लक्स सो करंट कैरिंग विल बी लाइक दिस so as per right hand thumb rule if this is a current carrying the outstretched thumb will determine what is the north pole so as per this direction of current obviously this pole will have n field windings are wound all the poles with a specific current direction these windings are connected in series and that is producing alternate north south poles so use right hand thumb rule and check whether we are getting alter alternate poles or not so field windings simple job is to carry current which is responsible for production of magnetic flux so obviously it should be made up of good conducting material like aluminum or copper but copper has a property and that is better pliability it can bend easily because here we are going to bend wires to form a coil around a pole core hence the choice of material for field winding is copper so here i will write for all the remaining parts also yoke is a better magnetic material made up of cast iron pole is also a magnetic material cast iron or cast steel pole is made up of laminations field winding a better pliability is provided by copper hence copper is a choice of material let's go to next part and that is armature so let's draw the structure once again for a better understanding so armature is somehow like this it is having slots so these are armature slots why the slots are required because the slots are carrying armature conductors armature conductors are a major area for our purpose because emf got induced in the armature and precisely it is in a armature conductor so obviously this armature conductor or armature winding 
is nothing but a simple winding wire just like a field winding and it is made up of copper plus we have a slots for connecting a shaft and air ducts are provided for a cooling purpose this armature is carrying a magnetic flux so in order to have a low reluctance path it should be made up of a best quality magnetic material and the choice is once again cast iron or cast steel plus in order to avoid eddy current losses it is made up of thin laminations so thin laminations of this are made and stamped together to form a armature and slots are provided where i can fit armature conductor made up of good conducting material that is copper so this is what a armature and armature winding so basically we can consider the armature is that part of a dc machine where emf is induced from this armature winding we can take a current or a voltage out of the dc machine like this so here in a terminal box i am having two wires for the input and these two wires are for the output so this output wires coming from this armature conductors let's go to the next part and that is commutator very important part in a dc machine before that let me write this armature is made up of a magnetic material because magnetic flux is associated with it hence the choice of material is cast steel or cast iron will also do armature conductor is made up of copper because it is simple of wire and the job of this wire is to carry output current so next part is a commutator a very important part in a dc machine okay as we discuss earlier commutator is a mechanical rectifier so whatever currents has been developed or whatever emf has been induced in the armature current that need to be taken out for that purpose it is first connected to a commutator commutator is made up of a segments and that segment is made up of a copper because it has to carry a current so obviously it is made up of a copper segments plus two segments are separated by a mica thin layer of a mica is here so basically one segment is associated with the one conductor of a armature winding and these two are separated by a thin mica insulation so it's a copper segments with mica insulation between two segments so the job of commutator is first take out the voltage and current from armature conductors for the outside world and secondly serve as a purpose of mechanical rectifier so that alternating dc generated inside armature conductor can be converted into unidirectional dc so that is the job of a commutator it is made up of copper and two segments are separated or insulated by a mica let's go to the next part and that is brushes so commutator is fit 
with the armature so obviously as armature is rotating to cut the flux in order to induce a emf commutator is also rotating so it's very difficult to take out a supply from the commutator we should have something which is stationarily fit into the commutator and that is brushes so commutators and brushes will have the relationship like this on a commutator segment brushes are fit commutator is moving but brushes are stand still so it is connected to every segment of a commutator to take out the current so basically the job of brush is to take a voltage or a current that is there inside a commutator to outside wall meaning here i am having a dc voltage produced now and that dc voltage i can take out from the commutator to through this brush to the terminal box and to this i can connect a load so the job of brush is just to uh, just a communicator between commutator and outside wall and it is made up of carbon a soft material because here it has to deal with a fraction between commutator and himself but still it is not rotating a stationary fit to the commutator with the help of spring so here we have seen all the various parts of a dc machine okay whether it is a dc generator or a dc motor still the construction of dc machine remains same thank you